Hello and welcome back to our video lecture sessions. As I said before, so far we have been focused on understanding the methods, tools and procedures on how to evaluate mainly concepts and low fidelity prototypes. Now I would like to focus more on how to evaluate functional prototypes. This is by distinguish main UX concerns and usability metrics by trying to understand how to develop a good evaluation procedure and understand how to report and provide recommendations on how to improve. Before we start this session, it's important for you to know that this course is spread out over eight sessions. 14 days apart. During that time, we expect you to take part of the, on individual reading assignments, participate in group assignments and fulfill all Also, I would like to remind you about the assessment criteria. The assessment will be built on the following activities. Six group assignments, five individual assignments and one final assignment. You are required to participate at least at 70% of all activities and be graded with 51% or more. To better illustrate how this course works, I, I draft here a simple schema. The arrow uh, points out to the, to the session where we are in. And down there you see the uh, link to a feedback table so you can see the progress done and your ongoing work. Hope this helps you to better visualize what you need to do next and what you have done so far. As a last reminder, I would like to discuss what we have addressed in session 1 and session 2. Uh, we mainly discuss on why we need to evaluate, what was the main purpose of evaluation and what methods to choose. And we also discuss some, as mentioned before, um, low fidelity prototype evaluation uh, focus more on uh, qualitative measurements. It's mostly formative. It's, it's not so rigorous as a uh, high fidelity uh, evaluation um, procedures. High fidelity evaluation includes both and it should include a mixed method or with both formative and summative assessments. And uh, how you choose these methods and how you implement these methods uh, has a direct link Today we will be focused on the methods and tools uh, to evaluate high fidelity prototypes of products in the market. We will also be focused on how to design an evaluation procedure and how to implement methods to evaluate high fidelity prototype or functional prototypes. Also, they are, can be a With low fidelity prototypes or paper prototypes or concepts, we focus more on uh, what are users' ideas, frustrations and wishes. We focus more on getting feedback on their ideas and concepts and how to move forward to design. With high fidelity prototype or functional prototypes, we focus more on errors and trying to fix those mistakes. We focus on how to make our product better. We are not focused so much on users' ideas and concepts because on this phase we assume that our prototype or our uh, product is more or less defined. We focus on make it efficient and effective. We focus more on usability. In this stage of the prototype, high fidelity prototype, the process of evaluation is much, much rigorous. We look for uh, specific aspects on our product that doesn't work, errors, and we try to fix it. So we focus on specific activities that we want to improve. We focus on specific 
uh, interactions that we want to um, make it better and how you do the test and how the constraints that we have are important to be well defined. Why most high fidelity measurements are basically usability metrics. We look for the usefulness of the product. We look for usability, how efficient it is, how effective it is, how satisfactory it is for the user. And we look also for emotions in the user experience. What emotion the user experience when using certain product or when doing certain activities. How then to evaluate the user experience with high fidelity prototypes or products in As I said before, the most known methods are related with usability. The, one of the methods that is used is called the system usability scale. We also use some sets of heuristics. We also can use cognitive walkthrough method. Think a the group of usability or the previous methods that we addressed, there are other methods that are a kind of a adaptation of usability scales or usability methods and they were a little bit adjusted to provide more um, data and more information on the user experience. Those, are, those methods are called extended usability test or the true tracking real-time user experience or user expert, expert evaluation basically are the heuristics or property checklist another method or heuristic inspection. Other completely new methods that came out that measure usability and user experience, they, they are called the attractive diff, the emo, emo cards, uh, emo faces or reaction cards. Emo cards, emo faces and reaction cards are mainly to measure emotions and emotion reactions. A topic that we already discussed on previous sessions, but it, that it is important for you to clear understand. So basically, usability is a measurement of a set of indicators or dimensions or um, characteristics. Those are called effectiveness, efficiency, satisfaction, and some of them have also learnability and memorability as dimensions to address or measure usability of a product. As I said before, this is what we call the pragmatic qualities of a product or service because they are very easy to measure from a quantitative uh, measure. Efficiency is measured on how fast the user can do or perform certain tasks like a login uh, into a system or into an application. We measure this based on time. So it's a time to task measurement. It gets as a quantitative number at time. And usually we set up an ideal time to finish this task and we calculate the percentages of total users that were able to The learnability factor is measured mainly by the degree of easiness to fulfill certain tasks. How many mistakes you do to fulfill or finish, for example, a login in your product or your application. This is separated in two moment in time when you use your product for the first time and when you use your the product after stopping for the satisfaction dimension is the most tricky one to measure within the usability testing as is no longer measured with only quantitative measurements. We are not interested in to know how efficient it is, how easy it is to fulfill the tasks. So we cannot measure the time to task or the number of errors or the number 
of clicks that we need to do to fulfill certain tasks. We need to look for how the user perceives the product, how satisfied it is, what are the emotions that the product provokes in the user, what is the user opinion. That's why we use more qualitative measurements and we look for in using interviews or written and oral questionnaires. And that's why the previous methods that we have learned so far will be useful to measure this factor. Accessibility is another important dimension to measure when evaluating a high fidelity prototype or a product in the market. We need to know if everyone can access to our product or not. There are degrees of the accessibility and this is, um, there is predefined questionnaires and predefined uh, heuristics uh, inspection methods that you can use to measure the accessibility. As said before, user experience subsumes usability and includes uh, additional um, feelings like emotions, beliefs, preference, perceptions of the user. Uh, so far, we have been addressing uh, usability focus measurements. Uh, we, we have tackled a little bit of satisfaction factor. But we also, in our evaluation protocol and when evaluating a high fidelity product type or a product in the market, we should address other uh, uh, hedonic aspects of the product as well. As I said before, um, in a high fidelity prototype phase or product in the market, we already develop our concept, our ideas. We already tested uh, user opinions and if we did it right, we already know more or less what are the user's needs. So we are now focused more on the product, not so much on the users. That's why we focus on the usability metrics, trying to find errors, trying to make the, our product more efficiency, uh, more uh, effective, more efficient, more uh, satisfactory. Has some common ways to or metrics to measure the effect, effectiveness and the efficiency of certain products. We can do it in three ways. We can measure the task success, either can be successful or can be failure. The user cannot fulfill certain tasks. We can have a middle term, so a complex success is when the user is able to finish certain tasks without any assistance. A partial success is when the user is able to do a task but he needs some assistance. This we consider or I consider to be a failure, so it means that this task needs to be improved. Another way to measure efficiency and effectiveness is to measure the time. How long does the user take to finish certain tasks? We establish an uh, average time to finish the task. If the user is able to finish within that average time, then we consider to have a successful task. If not, then we need to improve. Another way to measure is counting the errors. How many mistakes does the user do to fulfill? Another way to test our product uh, is to look for issues or we call it issue-based metrics. We look for anything that prevents the task to be completed, anything that takes someone off course, anything that creates some level of confusion, anything that produces an error, not seeing something that should be noticed, assuming something is correct when it is not, performing the wrong action, misinterpreting some pieces of content, not understanding the navigation. This is done mainly providing the user some a set of tasks and observe if he follows what is expected or not. If we find a issue that is not uh, it, that is performed as as not expected.
Another way to assess the quality of our product or high fidelity prototype is using the heuristics evaluation or using uh, what we call an inspection method. We inspect our product based on the set of heuristics that are usually provided by experts like Jacob Nielsen heuristics evaluation. These heuristics mainly is for us to understand if our product meets the requirements needed to be in the market. One of these requirements is to be assessed. After testing our product one and do the data analysis, the way that we report our, um, our findings is in terms of how how high is the impact of these errors or these issues in the user experience? Usually we classify them as low in or high severity. Finally, and as a last resource, I would like to, to explain uh, additional metrics that we use also to do usability or to test usability. They are called self-report metrics and they, are usually, uh, they usually help to assess the satisfaction of the user on how he perceives um, the, your product. We also have some behavior and psychological metrics of using like eye tracking that we are going to learn in the next session. Or we can also compare and combine. We call it A-B testing, basing on combinations of previous uh, design. That many people does is how many subjects or how many users do I need to use? This is a very tricky answer to, to give to you as it depends on many variables. So it depends on uh, what is the evaluation pur purpose. It depends on how you design your uh, evaluation protocol and also depends on the, the results that you get. Basically, if you know exactly what are you looking for, what are the answers that you're looking for, you need to, to more or less understand if the answers were given already or not. And, th and that way you know how to stop. But in a simple way, you can divide the evaluation purpose in two different scenarios. So you can have and you can design your evaluation protocol to be done in a lab scenario. When you do that, you design uh, an evaluation procedure that is very similar to experiment or quasi-experiment protocol. These evaluation procedures are very much rigorous procedures. They collect mainly quantity-based uh, data. This means that you need numbers and means as well that it requires a large number of participants or more participants. So you get significant data to understand what are the errors that you need to correct. Another way is using a field scenario or designing your evaluation purpose in the field. This means that you design uh, with a different purpose. You design your evaluation to understand what are the user's needs, to understand user's behaviors and how you can create applications that satisfy users. In that case, you apply techniques like ethnographic and contextual inquiry approaches. In this case, the numbers are more flexible it, because they always depend on how you do your observations and how you combine your data. So, usually in this case, we start with a number of five and then we, we see if we get the results that we need or not. If not, then we go and... Another thing to be aware when designing a protocol is that you can apply, apply uh, pre and post tests. This means you can get 
use a feedback before using your product and after using your product. A very common pre and post test is using a method is using The way we de you design your evaluation protocol, um, it has a direct link with the results that you obtain and the number of participants that you need to use. Basically, if the evaluation protocol is well designed, this means that if the, the evaluation protocol that you, you design helps you to get data, that helps you to answer the questions that you initially had, then it's a good evaluation protocol. If not, then it means that you design your evaluation protocol badly. It means that the data that you get back is also bad. So now to make it happen or to create a good evaluation protocol, I will address As a good user experience, you need to be aware that a good product or a, a, a efficient product in the market or effective and cheap product is not enough nowadays to, to fulfill the requirements. We need to stim stimulate pleasure as well. We need to create a product that is enjoyable and satisfactory for the user. As products and in the market are many. This is, as addressed before, the quality of the results uh, reflect directly on your choices of UX evaluation methods and how do you apply it and how you do data analysis. And uh, the quality of your results has a direct impact also on the quality of your product and In the future, we will focus on learning the methods and the tools. We will focus on how to design a better evaluation proceed and a procedure and how to implement the protocols. We also try to apply each known method or the most known methods uh, during the different development phases, the concept phase, the low fidelity phase and the high